Hey everyone, this is Fidel Hacker, AJ Raven, and welcome to the latest Geek Geekery News Briefs, where I quickly go over some of the stuff that happened in geek and pop culture so that you guys have something on your radar. So, let's start. We're going to begin by talking about the latest box office reports. I have it open in front of me. I ha I'll have the link to that in the description below. So the widest released and the movie that a lot of people were looking forward to was Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. Now, when I ended up hearing about this movie, I... Yeah, I couldn't understand why Universal was giving a spin-off to uh, Dwayne Johnson, especially because I think all of us know about the uh, disagreements between Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson, that when Dwayne Johnson ended up joining the Fast and Furious franchise, he wanted to take it away from Vin Diesel. He wanted to make his make it his own and I was like you know what Dwayne Johnson even though you are a superstar and you are beloved around the world the Fast and Furious franchise uh, especially after the passing of uh, Paul Walker it belongs to Vin Diesel so you don't take away someone else's franchise and come out looking as the good guy at the end and but anyway, Universal decided to give Rock this movie and they also ended up uh, having the film co-star Jason Statham and the film and now the box office results are in even though the audience liked it a lot. I guess it has an A- minus cinema score. Well, the box office numbers don't lie and it ended up grossing only 60.8 million at the weekend box office which if you guys look at the past results of the franchise it's the lowest opening for the Fast and Furious franchise since 2019. So the lowest opening in almost a decade. And yes, yes, there are some fans who are saying that spin-offs aren't supposed to make a lot of money. And I'm like, you know what? If a spin-off isn't supposed to make a lot of money, then the then Universal shouldn't have agreed to uh, a close to a 200 million budget for this film. So the reason that they ended up giving so much money to produce this film it goes to show that the studio thought that this movie was going to do far better than it did. Now, I'm not saying that Hobbs and Shaw is a flop, uh, considering its 200 million production budget without advertising, and especially because the Fast and Furious franchise does exceptionally well uh, overseas, this film is going to turn a profit, but then again, it could end up not doing as well as as the studio and especially Dwayne Johnson thought so Vin Diesel might probably be very happy about it and talking about Vin Diesel they are currently in production for the latest Fast and Furious film which which brings the entire gang back and uh, they're also adding John Cena to the cast and Charlize Theron is coming back and Helen Mirren is coming back so why do you think that Hobbs and Shaw didn't do well as far as I'm concerned I do think that it didn't do well especially because People know about the fight between Vin Diesel and The Rock and they and some fans of Vin Diesel thought that if that they shouldn't go and support uh, Dwayne Johnson making this franchise his own. And also because a lot of fans aren't really happy that Jason Stratum, who is actually a villain in the Fast and, Fran uh, Fast and Furious franchise, he also killed Han. I think Gal Gadot's character also died because of him or maybe because of his brother, but basically they ended up uh, turning a villain into a good guy and a co-lead for a film and some fans aren't happy about it. But you know what? Let me know if, if you guys have uh, watched Hobbs and Shaw and what you, what you guys thought about it. Coming to the rest of the box office re results, The Lion King has ended up making 430 million domestically and well, Disney has been making money. Aladdin crossed the billion mark. Lion King is there already. Toy Story 4 is going to cross that as well. And then we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which dropped 51% uh, in its second weekend. And yeah, talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, there is some controversy surrounding that film. Well, there was controversy surrounding that film ever since it screened at Cannes. And was it Cannes? It was a French film. Uh, screening somewhere I'll have the link I'll have I'll have more details but yeah people are not happy with how uh, women fictional women were treated in this film especially because this film used Sharon Tate's unfortunate murder and also uh, Bruce Lee's daughter came forward and she isn't happy about how this film ended up ruining her father's legacy which yeah I mean Bruce Lee is known all around the world and and Quentin Tarantino doing that to Bruce Lee yeah not not a good artistic choice I don't even know why he did it but anyway let's see how this film does when award season kicks in 
Talking about films, uh, a new trailer for uh, Tyler Hecklin's upcoming film called Can You Keep a Secret has been released and it's a rom-com which is based on a book and we wrote about it on the Geek Theory and I mean I like Tyler Hecklin but I don't think I like him enough to go and watch his movies in theaters but if you guys are interested his film I don't think it has a release date yet but yeah let me know if you guys are excited about it and as far as I'm concerned yeah Tyler Hecklin he does look like uh, someone who is at Chris Pine's caliber and by that I mean that I think that Tyler Hecklin as an actor he does very well when he's a romantic lead in rom-com movies so let's see how his career moves forward if this film does well. As far as I'm concerned, nothing too interesting happened over the past few weeks because mostly we talked about a lot of stuff on the Geek Theory, but yeah, check, that, check the, that stuff out as well. There's a Marvel's Runaway and Marvel's Cloak and Dagger crossover happening this December. And talking about crossovers, there is news uh, related to CW's Arrowverse that I'm quite excited about, and that's that uh, the upcoming Arrowverse crossover, which is titled uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, has cast Kevin Conroy as the live action Batman and for those of you who don't know Kevin Conroy is iconic in the voice acting world he ended up uh, voicing Batman in the awesome very old uh, Batman the animated series and he is for a lot of people he is the voice of Batman and you know what as far as I'm concerned good for Kevin Conrad that he because he voiced Batman and made his voice an icon uh, that yeah he deserves to play Batman in the live action uh, platform as well and he will be playing an older version of Batman in the upcoming Arrowverse crossover also reportedly Black Lightning will be part of the upcoming uh, crossover as well which makes sense because as far as I can tell the Black Lightning's world is different from the basic Arrowverse universe but now because the crossover is titled uh, Crisis of, on uh, Infinite Earths it makes sense that Black Lightning's universe also plays a role in the upcoming crossover and also Brendan Root will be donning his cape he'll be playing Superman again and now we have Tyler Hecklin as Superman we have Brendan Root as Superman we have Kevin Conroy as an older version of Batman yeah it's going to be fun anyway let me know if there's any news that you want to that you want to share with me let me know about that in the comment section below and yeah have you watched Hobbs and Shaw why do you think it didn't do well at the box office and what do you think about Kevin Conroy ended up playing Batman in the live action version of the crossover? Yeah, let me know. And until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.